Welcome to the CEO of Destiny podcast, where you will find the tools to fulfill the purpose of your generation and wildly succeed in the marketplace. And now your host, Andre J. Benjamin. What's going on, everyone? This is the CEO of Destiny Podcast. I'm your host, Andre J. Benjamin, and I am delighted to be with you on another episode. This is the podcast where we explore how exactly can we bring God a return on his investment. I believe that God is your greatest investor. And if you are a person that is tired of trudging through life, kind of basically meandering, trying to find your way, if you are a person who is a high achiever, meaning that you're excelling in your present area of responsibility and that you take your life seriously. You are at a place where you're having ears to hear. You want more out of life. You want to give God a return on his investment. You want to see your life optimized. You want to be in the driver's seat rather than the passenger seat of your life. You want to basically take your gifts multiply them, increase them, take the resources you have, multiply them, increase them. You want to add value to others. You want to live a life of radical obedience to where you make a difference in the imprint and build a legacy for your family, for your community, for your society, then this is the podcast for you. If you want to live the life of average and you are comfortable in the life of average, this is where you cut this podcast off and you go to a podcast that is fitting for your goals. So without further ado, let's jump into this episode. This episode, I want to talk about the dignity of choice. What do I mean by the dignity of choice? Well, if you take a look in the beginning, I remember that when I was young, I always used to be frustrated by being a child. Now, some of you might be alone, uh, might leave me alone in this and be like, ah, that wasn't my case. I like being a child. I did like being a child. But the one thing more than others that was really kind of messed up for me was having to take orders from someone else. I love my parents dearly. I love my dad. I love my mom. But I didn't want them telling me what to do. And I didn't believe that they really knew everything. I said, man, some of the things you say don't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. The things like when they would try to give us food and we didn't like, for instance, I didn't like green beans. And they'd be like, there's a kid that's starving over in another country that doesn't have this. And I'd be like, man, well, then you should give it to that kid, you know. That's what I'm thinking in my head. I get in trouble if I say it, though. But in reality, that's how I felt with a lot of the logic that they use. My parents told me to go and get an education, to work hard in life. They told me that you, to be an honest person, to be a, a upright person, to not cheat, to not lie, to not steal. The basics, the, the, for, the, the, the formal training that you need to add value to society. And in them telling me that, though, one of the things that I didn't like was that they had the power to actually be the one to tell me that I had to do something. So you have to do your homework now. You know, you have to go to bed now. Uh, you got to get up and go to school now. Uh, We're going over to see this relative, though you don't want to go see them. You know, you're going to this place. You know, we're walking into these different areas. That was frustrating. So people making decisions on my behalf was of the utmost frustration for me. When I was able to finally get my own job and even earn money on my own because I was somewhat enterprising, not as enterprising as I could have been, but I was somewhat enterprising. So I would make deals with people to pick up different things for them, clean up, arrange on the price and, you know, do things as a kid to earn extra money outside of allowance. And it was glorious to me to be able to have it because I would say, man, this is mine. I made the decision to go get this and now I can decide what I do with it. So decision was huge for me. I loved it. I hated sitting in classrooms at school and having to do what seemed like mindless busy work. So we have a responsibility. What separates us from the animals is that animals were created with a program. They were created with a predisposition. Um, They do have somewhat... Uh, the ability to operate, but it's through instinct. It's through that primal uh, instinct that they operate. They survive by instinct, that God, he, he, he designed them and he made them to have instinct. Whereas us, we have instincts as well, but he gave us the dignity of choice. He gave us the ability to choose. A verse that I want to read is in Daniel 1, 8. It says, But Daniel made up his mind that he would not defile himself with the king's choice food of the wine which he drank. 
So he sought permission from the commander of the officials that he might not defile himself. Daniel 1.8. So do you have a made-up mind to create a legacy? Do you have a made-up mind to bring transformation in your life? Do you have a made-up mind to make a profit this day and this year? Do you have a made-up mind to be set apart? God wants you to not just basically stumble into things. He wants you to make a decision. People believe that indifference is, is not a decision. We, we, we actually believe that we can be stuck in neutral. We actually believe that if we don't make a decision that we're not making a decision. But you actually are making a decision. When you stifle your growth, you stifle your development, you stifle where you can go and the opportunities that could come your way by not making a decision. That is a decision. So decide has the comes from the uh, root words of size and side, which means to cut off, to cut off other options. Just like you say homicide, you know, another word my uncle introduced me to was verbicide. I thought that was powerful to kill the meaning of the verb. You know, did God really say found in Genesis three? We have to allow our minds to be cultivated by God. I actually had a pretty powerful thought about how we make our decisions and how we're affected by so many things. We're affected by our family. We're affected by the information that we hear. And do we properly discern and distinguish between the information? Do we have the proper filters? Or are we just taking it in with no filter? Are we guarding our heart because out of it flows the issue of life? Are we taking heart how we hear? Jesus told the disciples to take heart how they hear. Be careful how they hear. Listen with intent. Listen with clarity. Listen with the the uh, guard of the word of God in your heart that you have hid your word, his word in your heart that you would not sin against him. Have our, our ear hearkened to diligently listen to, you know, have our ear tuned to heaven to, to diligently hearken to the voice of God, to, to basically be quick to respond. That's our desire. That's our heart's cry. So we have to make a decision. We have the, the ability to make choices day to day. We have the ability to choose how we spend the time that's given to us. We don't recognize that when we uh, go and partake of a job, any job we take, we are basically selling our life away for money. That's what we do. We sell our, you know, we don't like to say things like that, but it's making it plain. You're selling your life for money. I'm selling my life for money. When I choose to take a job, I'm selling my life for money. So how do I multiply the time that I have? How do I make time for the things that are most important? How do I make time to be transformed by the renewing of my mind? How do I make time to go and spend time in the secret place and hear from the Lord? How do I make time to make disciples of all nations? How do I make time to create value for others? How do I leverage the technologies that are given in this era that allow for us to take our message and upload it to a billion people in a matter of moments? See, we have to learn to upload into the economy. And when we upload into the economy, we are creating value and we are making money. When we are downloading, that means we are spending money and we're losing time on something. Now, you can definitely get things, of course, you know, this is in a general sense, but it's changing from being just a consumer to being a prosumer, a concept that we've talked about before. How can we produce more than we consume? How can we, can we be productive? How can we be partakers of the divine nature and not just spectators, that we actually get in the game, we take action? Um, I was reading Job 29, 17, where it talks about, Job talks about how taking, uh, he took his, actually, let me pull the verse up. I want to pull it up real quickly. Job 29, 17. If you have a sword with you, which is the scriptures, you will look for yourself and see about this verse. So let me pull it up. Job is making his appeal to the Lord about how he doesn't feel like he should be going through these things. He says this, I broke the jaws of the wicked and snatched the prey from his teeth. That's powerful to me. I think it's a powerful imagery of taking a weapon. I, fit, I picture a weapon in his hand and breaking the jaw of the wicked. I think the wicked, I look at the wicked as not just a physical person. I look at it as lies, the spirit of the, the lying spirit, the deception, the ideas, the mentality, the, the ideas that hold people captive. Um, for ideas have consequences. 
be careful of doctrines of demons and all kinds of things for itching ears that come to destroy and to distort the minds of people. So we have to be careful. We have to be aware. We have to guard and filter our minds. And we have to use the word of God as that guard. So I'm going to say it multiple times, but this episode was made to make us think about the dignity of choice. We have the ability to make decisions, and our decisions determine our outcomes. Our outcomes, it determines our life, our destiny, our how we, what we're producing. What we consume determines what we produce. If I'm consuming garbage, then I will produce garbage. If I'm listening to, watching, um, taking in my heart, gazing upon, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. If I'm doing these things, then I am losing out. But yet, if I'm taking and saying, wait a minute, how can I go and get access to the right information? How can I go and get access to the right opportunities? How can I get access to the right mentoring and training? I'm going to say it again. How can I get access to the right information? So the knowledge gap. Okay, then what about the opportunity gap that you haven't been exposed to opportunities that actually are out there ahead of you of doing new things that would bring tremendous value in your life? And then if we take the uh, the 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 know-how by getting training from someone who has gone the places that we want to go, that we go and avail ourselves and we go expose ourselves and be around people that can help us become skillful and proficient and add value. This is what this episode is for. CEO of Destiny is the community where you can grow and develop in your God-given gift and be activated to transform your society. So that's it for this episode. I just wanted to drop a couple of nuggets that you can meditate on. Uh, do us a favor. Go ahead and leave us a review on iTunes so that we're easier to find for new listeners. And why don't you also do this? Why don't you also go to the website CEOofdestiny.com, check out the resources that are there, give us some feedback on some of the, your biggest challenges and struggles, and let's get together and figure out how we can grow together, how we can grow better together, how we can have impact in others' lives together, and how we can actually be the light of the world, be the salt of the earth. So, Father, I ask that you release blessing in your people, boldness to step out in courage, encourage and boldness, Lord, just unfettered, unhindered, to be able to activate their God-given gifts and talents and abilities, to be able to bring you a return on your investment. And we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Thank you for the dignity of choice to be able to choose life that we might live. You set before us life and death, and we want to choose life that we might live, the life and it more abundantly. In Jesus' name, let it be so. Tune in next time. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Do us a favor. If this was useful in any way for you, please go to iTunes and leave us a review. Reviews will allow others to easily discover the podcast. If you'd like more information and to receive a free download, rediscover your destiny, go to ceoofdestiny.com. Thanks again and tune in next time.